Welcome back to the Visser Podcast. Today we're diving into the most misunderstood macronutrient in the last 30 years, protein. Why it matters more than ever, why animal protein is superior for longevity and muscle preservation, key, remember, as we age, and how research after 2016 flipped the script on everything from post-workout meals to how much protein you can eat in one sitting. Let's go. Protein is essential in the most literal sense. It's the only macronutrient made of essential amino acids, meaning you must get them from food. It forms a structure of your muscles, organs, hormones, and immune cells. And get this, your body can't store it like carbs or fat. You either use it to rebuild and repair or it's broken down and excreted. It's also highly thermogenic, and we'll get back to this because this is fat loss, right? According to a 2004 study in the Journal of Nutrition, protein has a thermogenic effect of food, TEF, of 30% compared to 5 to 10% of carbs, 3% of fat. This is in J Nutrition 2004. This means you literally burn calories just digesting protein and it crushes cravings. What else do you want? A 2005 study published in AMJ Clinical Nutrition showed that increasing protein intake to 30% of calories significantly reduces hunger and late night snacking. AMJ Clinical Nutrition 2005, July. So if you're cutting calories, lifting weights, or just trying to stay lean and strong over 50, protein is your best friend. Okay, let's Let's get down to the controversy. Animal versus plant protein. Let's talk quality. Or pro all proteins are not created equal. Okay, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but this is what the science shows. Animal protein like beef, eggs, dairy, chicken, fish are complete with all nine essential amino acids. They also have high digestibility and bioavailability reflected in foods like the Diaz score digestible, indispensable amino acid score. According to a 2013 FAO report, animal proteins consistently outperforms plant proteins on the Diaz. FAO 2013 Dietary oh Protein Quality Evaluation in Human Nutrition. Look it up. The most clinical, critical amino, clinical, <laughs> Critical amino acid for building muscle is leucine. We know this. It triggers your, your system to go from catabolic to anabolic. To trigger muscle protein synthesis, we need around 2.5 grams to 3 of leucine per meal. You'd need 30 grams of whey or 140 grams of chicken breast to hit that. To match that with lentils, which is, you know, the go-to for kind of plant protein, you need at least six or more cups of it. That's not only a ton of volume, it also comes with fiber, carbs, and anti-nutritions that may hamper, may hamper absorption. A 2018 study in nutrition showed animal proteins were more effective in stimulating muscle protein synthesis across all age groups, especially for the older adults. This is Nutrition 2018, March. So yes, plants are powerful for gut health and polyphenols. Absolutely, we need them, okay? But when it comes to muscle and longevity, animal protein wins no contest. Here's where it gets wild though. And this is why I mentioned 2016. Before 2016, the dogma was clear. We all knew it in you know, the muscle world. Eat 20 to 25 grams of protein per meal max. Anything over was wasted. Well, but in 2016, a pivotal paper by Dr. Stuart Phillips and colleagues challenged this thinking. It showed that older adults, athletes, and those in energy deficits can use significantly more protein in a single sitting. J Nutrition, Journal of Nutrition, 2016, February. Look it up. Later studies confirmed this. 
You can absorb and use up to 40, 50, even 100 grams of protein per meal, depending on context, training status, and body composition. Your body doesn't cap out at 20. It adjusts based on demand. And remember, the so-called post-workout window turns out to be the anabolic window, right? Is a myth. Unless you've been fasting for many hours, mo muscle protein synthesis stays elevated for 24 to 48 hours post-training. Schoenfield and Aragon, Journal of Internal Sports Nutrition, 2013. Bottom line, focus less on timing and more on hitting your daily protein target. And what is that? That's 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight. Not your current weight, your ideal weight. Okay? So, now that we know that, let's talk about fat loss, right? Because we're all trying to keep our, as we age, it's harder to keep our fat down, uh, percentage down. Protein isn't just for building. It's your best tool for fat loss. And why is this? In a landmark study by Lehman et al., Two groups were put on the same calorie deficit. One ate higher carbs, the other ate more protein. The protein group lost more fat and preserved more muscle, despite eating the same calories. Journal of Nutrition, 2005, February. That's because protein boosts thermogenesis, improves satiety and reduces cravings, protects lean mass during calorie deficit, plus, it modulates hormones like GLP-1, which you talked about, ghrelin, and PYY, all key to regulate appetite. AMJ, Clinical Nutrition, 2006. So yes, you still need to move, but if your goal is to get lean without wrecking your metabolism, then high protein plus resistance training is the holy grail. It's what I preach. It's what I talk about all the time, and I'm just driving it home women and men. Now, this is somewhere where I've changed, why I don't skip breakfast anymore. And now my favorite rant. Look, I've used intermittent fasting with clients and myself, but if you're trying to build or preserve muscle, especially over 40, skipping protein in the morning is a big mistake. And this is why. A 2021 review of frontiers in nutrition showed that even distributed protein across meals, so if you distribute the protein across your meals, two, three, four, five meals, improves muscle retention in older adults. And this is Frontiers of Nutrition 2021. You can find it there. Also, you're more insulin sensitive in the morning. A high protein breakfast improves blood glucose regulation, reduces afternoon snacking, and sets the tone metabolically right? You're going to go into anabolics. Obesity, Silver Spring, 2015, January. Try this. Start your day with 30 to 50 grams of high quality protein. Oh, you ask me, okay, what could this be? A whey protein shake, Greek yogurt with eggs, lean meat and veggies. Don't start your day with toast and coffee. That's blood sugar crash waiting to happen. Okay, we need that leucine to kickstart anabolic cycle, 2.5 grams to 3 grams. So here you have it. Protein changes everything, and science finally caught up. The 20 gram limit is dead. Animal protein reigns supreme for muscle performance and aging. And you can't out cardio a protein deficiency. Hit that 1.6 to 1.8 grams, sorry, per kilogram sweet spot. Eat early, Eat often if you want, eat smart, and never fear a 100 gram steak again. This is the lowdown on protein. Thank you for tuning in to the Visit Podcast. If this episode helps rewire your thinking, share it with friends, subscribe, and let's keep spreading real science in a world full of fabs.